couldn't figure out how to pause it, so I just had to stop it, and now we're doing the second part. So we're going to look at echoes now. So I'm sure we've all heard of echoes before. We know that it is when you make a noise, and then you hear that same sound a few minutes later, or a few seconds later, rather. Okay, so formally, echoes are sound waves that have been or are reflected off of a surface. Um, two important, very important things that I've written here in blue. N, B, to do with the calculations we're going to be doing with sound waves and with echoes, is you need to remember firstly that these echoes have traveled twice the distance. Sorry, there's a cat attempting to ruin everything. These echoes have traveled twice the distance and obviously have taken twice as long to get there and back again. Okay, so very important to remember that. Um, so for an example, if we had a man standing and he shouts and there's a cave wall, he's inside a cave. Now, usually the point of echoes, well not the point of echoes, but a use of echoes is echolocation, which I'm sure you've all heard about. Bats use it, dolphins use it, submarines use it, some ships use it. The idea behind echolocation is either instinctively if it's an animal or actually using our, you know, our brains as humans, we can determine by making a sound how long it takes that sound to reach us exactly how far away an object is. Okay, so to do that, very important to remember that whatever the distance is from the source of the sound to the reflective surface, if that we're going to call our distance, and we, let's say, know the speed of sound in our medium, so in A in this case, and we know that the speed of a wave is equal to the distance it travels over the time it takes to travel that distance, right? But this time, the speed, the wave itself is actually not just traveling there, it's traveling there and back. So when you do echo calculations, we need to tweak this formula so that the velocity or the speed of your sound wave is actually equal to twice the distance. Okay, over the time given to you. Now, obviously, if they give you a time, they say it takes this long, we make a sound, three seconds later we hear the sound, it actually means that the sound took one and a half seconds to get there and one and a half seconds to get back. So those are two things you need to keep in mind when doing calculations with echoes. And that is the majority of the worksheet that you're going to do for me today. It's got to do with echoes. Okay, I'm going to try to see if I can pause this now and we're going to do the example on the top of the second note. Okay, guys, so this is your example that you've got. We've got a man standing between two cliffs. He claps his hands once and they give us the velocity of sound and they ask us what the time interval will be between the two claps. Okay, so we need to determine quite a lot here. First, we need to figure out how long it will take to get there and back. Okay, so that's the one trip. We also need to figure out how long that clap will take to get there and back. Now, I'm hoping you're agreeing with me. We will assume, we should expect that the time taken to get there and back will be shorter than there and back, right? Because this is a shorter distance for it to travel. Okay, so first off, the total distance our clap has to travel to get to clip one and back is actually 165 times two, right? So let's start with clip one. And I remember in physics, you always enlist the information you know. Okay, so for cliff one, our distance is 165 times two. It has to get there and then back, which is going to be 330, is that right? Yeah, 330 meters. Okay, we know that the velocity or the speed of our wave is 330 meters per second. And we want to know how long is that going to take? Okay, and we're going to do the same thing for cliff two. So we're going to look at cliff two to get from the man to cliff two and back. The distance is actually 110 times two meters, which is 220 meters. And our velocity is the same as with cliff one, 330 meters per second. And we want to know how long will it take the sound to get to the cliff and back again. Okay, so let's go for it. We know the formula and you always write the formula. Remember that it's worth a mark, okay? So we know speed is distance over change in time, which is going to be equal to, for cliff one, 
330 over 330. And I know you know that that's one, but please show me the substitution. So it's going to take, oopsie, I'm being a wally, sorry. It's time that we don't know. Hey, so we substitute 330 for distance. We want delta T and we substitute 330 for speed. I substituted in the wrong place. Okay, so now we're solving for the change in time. So we can cross multiply. This is the last time I'm showing you how to solve an equation. I'm hoping we can do it on our own from now on. We cross multiply. So we're gonna have 330 delta T equals 330 and we divide both sides by 330 and we get delta t equals one second it will take one second for the sound to reach cliff one and go back to the man okay now same process for cliff two we know that the velocity of the wave is the distance it must travel over the change in time oh my word this is clearly going well <laughs> Okay, the velocity it must travel is the, uh, the velocity will be the distance it must travel over the change in time. Now we know the distance it must travel is 220. We want the change in time and the speed is 330 meters per second. Okay, so when we actually calculate, calculate this, I think it's 0.66, 220 divided by 330. 0, 0,66666 recurring. Okay, so our delta T for cliff 2 is 0, 0,67 seconds. Now we double check the question. They didn't ask how long it would take. They said what will be the time interval between the two echoes. So to find the time interval, they're basically saying if I hear one echo, it'll be this one first, how long until I hear that echo? Okay, so it's actually not so hard. We just want to find the difference in time between the two echoes. So we're going to do delta t for cliff two, or for cliff one rather, minus delta t for cliff two, which is one minus 0, 0,67, which is 0, 0,33 seconds. So we will have to wait 0, 0,33 seconds between the two echoes. Okay, I'm hoping that's all right. This is actually quite a higher order one. Usually they just ask you to deal with one echo and they'll just sort of ask you how long does it take or how far away is the object. I'm hoping that we can cope with that. You're now going to do the worksheet for me. If you get stuck, please do ask. Okay.